So if you've been around my channel for the last couple of years, you've probably seen at least one of the many brickheads that I've designed over the last couple of years. Now, a lot of those, and most of them, I think there's only been about four or five that haven't, uh, most of them have been taken and then turned into a build lapse and then uploaded as a YouTube short and not ever really talked about much in a full length video. So, over the last couple of days, I've been designing four uh, brickheads for murder drones um, based off characters in that series because I watched it recently and it was actually pretty good. So, figured why not come back to making brickheads since I haven't done that in m multiple months and why not do a couple murder drones ones and see if I can still build. <laughs> So, instead of talking about how each brickhead was designed, I figured I would talk about a couple of the details and things that I really liked about them, and then just go from there. So, starting with Uzi as the first brickhead that I actually built in this little series, um, one of the first things that I actually really liked about, about this was not doing the standard 1x4, I guess, jawline. Um, as you can see, I actually took it and shaved it down. We're using a couple jumper plates to get a little 1x3 mounted in place so I can get that sort of rounded look that basically all of the heads in Murder Drones has. The next detail I actually really liked, especially when I was working on it, was trying to get this beanie to work up here. Now, in the show, Uzi does have a beanie. The problem with that is it's at such an awkward angle to where trying to replicate it 100% in LEGO was a little hard. However, I do think I was able to pull it off quite well, especially getting the little bobble up on top. Another detail I liked about this brickhead was being able to reuse the hoodie that I've actually used once before on another brickhead. If any of you have seen my XB Crafted brickhead, you'll probably recognize this as the exact same one that I used for it. The only difference is the hoodie for the XP Crafted Brickhead was actually two studs tall, and the hoodie here is only one stud tall. As one of the first actual murder drones in this little set, N was actually a little more difficult to build, not really even in the sense of just like actually designing most of it, because I actually got to just take a bunch of the parts that I used from Uzi and just kind of port them over, namely the face, because they all share the exact same basic head shape and design. So initially, the first problem that I actually had with this was trying to get the pilot's hat up here to work with the sort of like headband design that they all ha that all the murder drones have. The problem with this is I had to try to get these the pilot hat brim to go over the the headband. Now in the in the series in the show, the hat's at a roughly a, I think it's a 45 degree angle. Technically it's on the back of the head. However, you can't really do angles with with Lego. <laughs> Especially if you're doing this with brickheads, it doesn't like angles much at all, really. So I am still glad I got to pull this off. I did try a half stud long brim. However, a full stud did look a lot nicer. Now, the second detail I actually really liked, which is the same for N and then V, is actually the sort of tail design that each of the murder drones has. Now, this small design, mainly this bit here for the can, I don't know why I tried doing that, mainly this bit the actual canister and act like needle basically is not actually my design. The original design used to look like this. However, a, f a little while ago, I was actually looking at some other ideas of Murder Drones Lego basically, and somebody had the idea of using the arrow piece instead of this. So I switched to using this because it actually looks a lot better. Plus, in the show, a lot of the basically each murder drones, they all, they all have the exact same tail. And for the design, the I guess needle hangs underneath the canister and not off the end of it. Now, this one isn't really even a detail that I really liked. It's just something I've never done before that turned out really well. And that's actually double layering the hair, the, the face hair. 
Um, one of the things that I think LEGO actually does a lot in their official brickheads is they will use two layers for the front set of hair and then the rest is usually one layer or depending on if they use bricks or not three depends um if you're actually it depends on if you're going by plates or bricks who really knows um however i've never actually double layered the hair in any of my brick heads i originally used to only have one layer and the face like way back when the, i actually was using the face or when the face was only uh, a stud thick instead of two like it should have been <laughs> Um, I actually have switched and I'm now using the two, the actual two layer thick face and I've actually started double layering the hair for these brick heads because I actually think it turned out really well. Now for V, a few of these details were mainly just in the fact of the translucent bricks. I don't really get to use a lot of the translucent or transparent bricks that often, mainly because in the renderers, it doesn't really catch any of the light and it kind of has to catch it to actually look good unless you can just kind of see straight through it, which is kind of what happened with the eyes. However, the eyes caught just enough light to where you can still see the at least the general, the general outline and also see a little bit of the color out of it, so it will still work. The canister, like I said, for the tail, the canister turned out perfect. In the render, it actually caught basically all of the light, so you could actually see it, and it sort of glowed. It looked almost like the show. And here in the list, too, uh, difference between N and V is the studs that I use, the tiles that I used for N's, uh, basically headband, are actually solid color. They are the bright yellow-orange, but for V, I actually switched and used clear studs because they actually catch the light since there's no hat brim and there's nothing to block the light coming straight down, essentially. Another detail I like that I actually didn't point out on N, but it's the same for both N and V, is that both of them have sort of a coattails sort of thing. They both have collars on both of their jackets and both of them do have fur. However, for N's, I did use a few more studs so it gets a little more of a fluffy look. But with V's, I, us I used a lot more tile, so it gets sort of a more trimmed down, um, almost smoother look. You might also notice too that here on the torso, these are both two different colors. However, they're both black. It's just one is the solid plastic color black, and then this is actually the chrome black. One of the things I, I will usually do is if I need usually like a slightly lighter shade of something, the chrome colors usually work a little bit nicer than the solid shaded colors. Hence why I used it here. Now finishing with Sin, this was the last brickhead out of the four that I made. And this one took the longest the other three took about an hour hour and a half which is already more than i usually spend on a brickhead i usually spend about a half hour on each brickhead however those only took an hour to an hour and a half sin took two hours <laughs> to fully design now main things with that is just the hair um one of the errors was on my part the render that I was actually using as a reference image from the wiki was from one of the OST soundtracks that I found out was actually mirrored. It wasn't the right direction. So originally I had the hair facing to the left side instead of the right side, which was not right. And then when I finally started going back and referencing scenes from the show, I actually got it to face the right direction and look right. Now, one of the other details I did actually like was getting the bow to work again. Uh, I've actually used this sort of technique and design in a previous brickhead, one of my husband hotel brickheads actually. Um, the only difference between that one and this is the bow for Sin is actually slightly offset just to one side by like half a stud I think, which is just because in the show it's slightly leaning to like off the head sort of, it's at a very slight angle. 
So I just figured just moving it over ever so slightly on the brick head would get the same effect, and it actually did get really close to the same effect. Now, before I move over to the face, because that actually took the longest, was the hair and the shoes. The hair was another technique I don't think I've used for a while. I think the last time I would have used this sort of technique was when I was doing my Gemini Tabor kid, like two years ago. But I figured I'll use it again just because Sin has a lot of like just strands of hair that are usually just kind of just straight down. There's very, yeah, why not? And then the shoes, um, earlier when I was looking at Uzis, I, I think I actually forgot to mention, but Uzi does actually have boots in the show, and I used a bracket piece, sort of where the heel would be, to try to get that sort of boot aesthetic. But with Sin, Sin actually has heels. So um, to sort of replicate that, I just replaced the, we're just wherever the heel would be for a brickhead, and just replaced it with a stud. So it actually sort of has that rounded edge, that rounded base that a heel would actually have. Now, moving on to the face, the eyes and the mouth. So using custom printed pieces or just custom pieces in general is one of the things I don't usually do. I actually try to not do it basically at all just because for me it just gets rid of the challenge of trying to design something as complicated as one of these. However, if I were to use the regular brickhead eyes, it wouldn't have the same, like, I can show you right now. If we take off this eye, grab another one, we throw this one on, and there. How, what would, what would your opinion be if I just re very casually removed these eyes and replaced it with these? It wouldn't have the same feeling as in the show. So, in my opinion, replacing it and making them have these custom printed X's on them really helped. And honestly... I don't really mind it even though I broke one of my own quote-unquote rules I still think it turned out really good and it really helped bring the rest of the brickhead together now another one is actually one of the cons that I want to talk about the mouth and tongue so um, in the show multiple times um, Sin's tongue is just sort of just like a reoccurring it's not really even like a plot point it's just like a detail that just keeps getting reused over and over so I was like I kind of have to include it because they use it so much so um, I spent a half hour me and one of my friends just kind of bouncing back and forth in discord spent a full half an hour trying to get this to work and in the end um, none of this is actually connected. The face, uh, yeah, that's, this is just a tile. These two pieces are, like, very jarringly clipping into each other, but you can't see because the mouth is just covering it. And if I take off these, um, it's not even connected. <laughs> so there's actually nothing really even holding the mouth together. However, um, you wouldn't see this otherwise. And honestly, there's probably a way I can actually get this to work. The only thing is, the only reason I did do this, actually, was because I could not find a way at all to get this piece in to keep the jaw sort of, like, at least give it a little bit of a curve and have this tongue be at this diagonal angle. We tried going just a straight vertical, however, didn't look good. <laughs> Which is why I had to angle this, and then the mouth. I angled the mouth just slightly enough so it still will cover up the just the very jarring clipping issue happening right underneath it. <laughs> Overall, out of these four brickheads, I would have to say if I had to pick, Sin would have would be my favorite one just because I put the most amount of effort into it, and I got to use a couple little techniques and things that I never really got to use before, and I just kind of got to experiment. Yes. I did technically cheat, however, it still turned out really good. And there's actually a little more to this one that I haven't shown you. Now, in episode 8, 
Sin likes to use a lot of the Absolute Solvers, just sort of just general abilities and sort of weird machinations and things. And a lot of them are usually these little like tendril like claws or whatever you want, whatever you want to call it. And now in the thumbnail for episode eight, Sin actually is using two of these little claws to just sort of climb around and move. And there's also just this big one just kind of hanging there. So I just figured why not include these and because in the fight scene that also takes place during I would say it's about the midway point of episode eight. Sin also likes to use a lot of the claws whilst using the sort of medieval-esque sword. So that's going to be the end of the video. I hope you guys did enjoy listening to me talk about how I've actually have been building a lot of the brickheads over the last couple of years. Granted, these ones are a lot better in my opinion than the ones I've designed, what, two, two plus years ago. I think these ones turned out great. Um, I do find it funny how even though I spend typically like a half hour just on complete accident designing a lot of my other brickheads, these ones I spent upwards of two to three times as long on and I think they definitely turned out much better so I'm going to try to work on them longer in the future. If you would like to go and check out the renders afterwards, um, they'll be up on screen right now, but if you would still like to go and check them out later or again and you don't want to come back to this video, they'll all be up over on my Instagram account, and that's because over the last couple of days, as I've been designing them, I've been uploading the renders to my Instagram account almost as soon as the renders have finished being processed. So um, if you'd like to basically stay up to date with whatever brickheads or just whatever I might be doing, uh, my Instagram account is probably the best place to go because I'm I usually am doing a little more on there and just I'm there more frequently than I am here on YouTube. Another thing I have to say is that initially I didn't plan on doing more murder drones brickheads until maybe like a couple months later. However. I did like how all the four of these turned out. I'm really proud of them. So I think just for Halloween, since it is the spooky season, uh, I'm probably going to be making more at some point. However, I would like your guys' opinion on when I should actually upload them to YouTube. Currently, there's a poll over on my channel. I'll make sure to leave a link in the description, and I'll also pin it in the comment section so you can go find it in either or. Um, Basically, I just like your guys' opinion on, on whether or not I should wait until the end of Halloween, or not even the end of Halloween, just the end of the month, to upload them, just basically in time for Halloween, or if I should try to get them out as soon as possible. So, thank you all once again for sticking around in, to the end of the video, actually. Um, I hope you guys did have a good time watching and just kind of enjoy listening to me rant about these. Uh, it's it's been fun designing all these the brickheads for the last couple of years, so I do hope that you guys have been enjoying them as well. Uh, that is all I have to say. So I will see you guys all in the next video. Have an amazing day.